of the PIAA State Tournament for boys soccer. And we've been treated to really good soccer in the girls game just before this. It did run a little long, so we do apologize. Um, so thank you for tuning in to us. And make sure you download the Penn Sports Radio app on Apple and uh, Google Play Store. And uh, look us up on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and make sure you check out the website pensportsradio.com for all our updated schedules as we move into tournament season here as uh, football starting to wind down and soccer, field hockey, they're all starting to wind down here and uh, state's really ramping up. True, and I, uh, as both teams take the field, we have Northwestern Lehigh in all black with white numbers, and then we have Archbishop Ryan in all white with red numbers. Um, so just about a few seconds away here from kickoff, and uh, I'm excited for another excellent match here uh, at uh, Northwestern Lehigh High School in New Tripoli, Pennsylvania. Uh, we're looking at the Varsity Boys 3A States Round of 16. Yeah, so this is going to be a good one as uh, both these teams, like we've said, both very high-powered. Archbishop Ryan, I was kind of saying before the break there, uh, really improving themselves. They were 4-8 and eight two years ago in the 2018-2019 season, improved uh, to, I believe it was 7-3 and three last season, and then to come out uh, and be undefeated this year to uh, even in a shortened season as – we get first touch here, and we are underway in Northwestern Lehigh High School. Archbishop Ryan controlling the ball up the left side of the field and getting fought off the ball there, I believe, was number nine, um, Teddy Westervelt on the left wing. So an early throw in here for Northwestern Lehigh uh, as Archbishop Ryan gets control of the ball back but sends it up to about the third line and that's where it gets turned over back to Northwestern Lehigh, and now Northwestern Lehigh trying to move up field, but unable to keep control of it. And neither is Archbishop Ryan. Is uh, it's Mason Brensinger bringing it up, finds his teammate on the far side there, but not and not able to connect on the cross. And Archbishop Ryan, in the process of clearing this one out. And there is the cross ball back over the midfield line, but kicked out of bounds. So Northwestern Lehigh throwing. Already the intensity is pretty picked up uh, from both sides. Yeah, I definitely think both sides are just trying to find the tempo. They're trying to see what style of play the opposition is bringing to the table. And, and it just seems that both teams are working up that far side to try and uh, connect the passes. So Northwestern Lehigh kicks it out of bounds, and it's a throw in for Archbishop Ryan. Throws it in, but the ball is battled for about the 32 yard line of the football field. And it looks like it went out of bounds on a Northwestern Lehigh player. So another throw in for Archbishop Ryan as they slowly try to move it up the field here. And there's another wonderful throw in, real far, but bounced off a Northwestern player. Now the Northwestern defense. In control of it, but they lose it as Westervelt got in there to make a play, but kicked it too far and goes out of bounds for a goal kick for Northwestern Lehigh. Yeah, there seems to be a good high paced tempo uh, from this Archbishop Ryan team. I think they're as soon as the ball goes out of bounds, it's a quick throw and it's quick passing. It's it's moving the ball down the field to get it to their two strikers, Kilgit and Fofana. So Vogwell puts his foot into it, gets it out to about midfield as the ball's batted back and forth between both these teams. And Westervelt now on the on the wing sends it back to his defenseman. And that was number 22, Jared Lolly. And now Northwestern Lehigh regains control in the defensive end, trying to make a move up midfield. Loses it for a second, but Matthew Johnston there to collect it and... Let his, uh, let his teammates kind of gather themselves for the play. So Northwestern Lehigh moving it up the right side now. as That is uh, Joshua Zellner with control of it. He, pet, he passes it up to uh, number 17, Seth Brady, who passes it up again for Zellner, but kind of overleads him, and it goes out of bounds for an Archbishop Ryan throw-in. Looking for what he wants to do is... Uh, 
finally gets it in, but throws it right to a Northwestern Lehigh Tiger. And now the play is on, and there was an interesting little move there from Colin Cofield trying to head it over to Matthew Johnson. If he had gotten a foot on that, Johnson may have had a good look at a run there. Yeah, I think um, I think they're def uh, one thing for Northwestern Lehigh is they're moving – the ball from left to right really well right now um and they're spreading the field which is something that i think can counterattack this archbishop ryan team so northwestern lehigh spending a lot of time in the archbishop ryan defensive zone as there's a shot not quite on goal as it goes over the <laughs> over the crossbar and i'm getting the signal for three points as it goes into the field goal uh it was uh mason brensinger taking the right-footed shot, clears the bar, clears the field goal post, and three points... To Northwestern Lehigh. To Northwestern Lehigh. In football. Theoretically. <laughs> it's still 0-0 on the scoreboard as we have just about 35 minutes left here in the first half. Still early in this one, but both teams really showing some fight as uh, there's a ball that goes out of bounds on Archbishop Ryan. So a throw-in for Northwestern Lehigh and a quick throw-in taken... It looks like that was headed by uh, number 22 for Archbishop Ryan. That is Jarrett Lally. So headed back out of bounds. And now Ryan Baker going to take the throw in here deep in the Archbishop Ryan zone. And we know what he can do in terms of a throw in. It's essentially a, a long corner for him. Um, and the ball kind of dribbles up. But the goalkeeper for Archbishop Ryan, I believe that's Brian Howe, uh, Able to corral that one and sends it out almost about three quarters of the way down the field. Yeah, that was um, Coach Hanny mentioned a couple key players to watch, and um, he had his eyes on Joseph Phillips, the sophomore goalkeeper, saying he he's been playing great. He he's been really commanding that back line, and and I think it's pretty big for a sophomore to step up in in this state's round of sixteen. All right, so thank you for clarifying that. It was, uh, Jason Phillips that uh, in goal, not uh, Bryant Howe, who is the junior. As there's a shot on goal, and it is in for Northwestern Lehigh. My goodness, Colin Cofield coming out of nowhere. Offsides not called. That one's going to count, folks. It's a one nothing game this early. It, it kind of caught us off guard as we were kind of breaking down the play there and collecting ourselves. That was we're in the 34th minute. Yeah, five minutes into the game, and uh, Northwestern Lehigh strikes early against Archbishop Ryan, and now Archbishop Ryan going to have to play from behind. And I'd like to point out that uh, we had Colin Cofield at – on our broadcast uh, post game of their win against Southern Lehigh. Yep, he was on. A, he, I believe he got the assist uh, for Mason Brensinger in that game winning goal in overtime out in Palisades. So that's big for the momentum of Northwestern Lehigh now is Archbishop Ryan in the uh, offensive zone trying to make a play here but loses it to Northwestern Lehigh as it looks like it's Matthew Johnson. On the left wing, passes it back and now gets cleared out by the defender on the far side there. We are up in the second level of the press booth here at Northwestern Lehigh, so a little bit of a distance to try to read some of these numbers. So we will do our best to get those for you uh, when things are happening. But right now on the near side of the field, Zellner gets the ball taken away from him as... Uh, Northwestern Lehigh now looks like they're trying to play a little bit more defensive with that early one nothing lead. Yeah, definitely, and it seems that Archbishop Ryan is is they're going to be playing catch up for the next 30, 40, 50 minutes of this game, and um, it's definitely something to watch out for. And um, I will say that they were down one zero in their win against Archbishop Wood, so they might be used to playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, they ended up pulling that one out two to one. Uh, as they were able to qualify for this state tournament, talking to a couple of the Archbishop Ryan parents prior to the game, just to kind of get an idea of what this game, uh, what this team is like. And like I said, no Philadelphia Catholic League championship to be decided. It was pretty much a play-in by the, the two two of the teams that were eligible, 
And uh, it came down to Archbishop Ryan and Archbishop Wood to decide who represents the PCL in the state tournament. And Archbishop Ryan gets the advantage there, 2-1. to one. And We are here now, ready to... Uh, ready to decide who moves on in this tournament as Northwestern Lehigh now with control of the ball in the offensive zone. Mason Brensinger sends it in, but not able to really do anything with it there. I believe it was number um, number 17, Seth Brady, trying to make a move into the box, but not able to do so. And Archbishop Ryan now kind of kicking it around in their defensive zone, now clears it back over the midfield line as... Uh, it's number 24, Lucas Van Lirup, chasing that one down for Northwestern Lehigh. He had Siddiqui uh, Fofana really on his heels there trying to catch up to that ball. Yeah, Fofana is definitely one to watch. Uh, keep an eye on for the rest of this game. Um, he's sitting on eight goals, five assists on the season. I know it's a shortened season, but senior captain, potentially playing in your last game, leading the your team in goals. You know, he's got a bit of weight on his shoulders, but. Um, I, I I think Archbishop Ryan now just needs to, you know, do what they normally do and, and just, you know, counterattack and, and hope to settle down and figure out their offense. Yeah, this one nothing uh one nothing deficit is definitely not anything that you can say is there's a shot on goal and a beautiful save there by uh Austin Vogwell for Northwestern Lehigh. He had to dive almost into the pole to make that save. And now it's going to be a corner for Archbishop Ryan on the far side. As it looks like it is number nine, uh, Teddy Westervelt. As there's a ball into the box. Wide open net for Archbishop Ryan, but Northwestern Lehigh is able to clear it back out to midfield. And now Seth Brady with control of it with one man to beat coming down the far, the, the far side of the field. He gets tangled up as he's going to try and do this all himself, but he crosses it over looking for, it looked like Matthew Johnson. Matthew Johnson not able to get a foot on it, and we are going to get Northwestern Lehigh's first corner of the game here. <laughs> that was a pretty interesting sequence of events. A wide open net for Archbishop Ryan cleared out by Northwestern Lehigh, and Seth Brady almost takes it from midfield all the way into the box. Uh, not able to get the connecting pass on the cross, but uh, definitely good play there as the cross comes in or the corner comes in, headed away by Archbishop Ryan, but floated back in towards the net, and that is where Jason Phillips will take control of it, send it back out to midfield, where Archbishop Ryan now takes control, sends it over, kicked back by a Northwestern Lehigh player, and now sent back by Archbishop Ryan as they're kind of playing volleyball with it over the 50-yard line right now. Yeah, that was a pretty good spout right there uh, by Archbishop Ryan. The first shot uh, went through a bit of traffic, and I think uh, the goalkeeper for Northwestern, Lehigh, didn't really see it. And then that next corner, he had to come out again through some traffic. And here's a uh, hard play by uh, number 20, Timmy Cliggett, and number 24, Lucas Van Leerup, as they get tangled up. Uh, Cliggett falls on top of Van Leerup, but they're going to give the free kick to... Archbishop Ryan from about 30 yards out, a little over 30 yards. So a three-man wall for Northwestern Lehigh here as it's going to be Siddiqui Fofana taking the free kick. He sends it in. It's off the bar. Actually, I'm not sure. Vogwell may have gotten a hand on it. It was very close one way or another. That was a the great free kick there by Fofana. I mean, he placed that right, and... And I, I actually also, Andrew, thought that uh, Bogwell had a save on that. But either way, that's a great shot on goal right there for Archbishop Ryan and Fofana. So it's a goal kick for Northwestern Lehigh, which means it was off the crossbar, not off Bogwell's hand. So Bogwell sends it back out to about midfield. And uh, they're going to get uh, Colin Cofield for a push on that one. <laughs> and that one was pretty, a little too obvious for the, the officials as uh, Van Lira. Tries doing a quick kick, but the official on the near side says, let's uh, let's get that set because you weren't quite at the spot. Sets it back about five more yards as uh, Owen Stock here taking the kick into the box for Archbishop Ryan. Northwestern able to clear it out momentarily, but Westervelt, 
he's all over the field. He's on near side. He's on far side. And he's uh, really making a difference here in the attack as he seems to he seems really eager to find the ball. Yeah, he um, I it, I'm assuming now that the uh, play of Archbishop Ryan seems to go through Westervelt as he's you know backtracking to help his defense, but also making sure that he's pushing his midfield um, and strikers forward to connect that pass from the back line to the final third. So the ball being passed around to the midfield line there is Archbishop Ryan sends it deep into the offensive zone for them. Northwestern Lehigh tries to clear it, but doesn't quite get it out all the way as there's a fight for it about the 35-yard line of the football field. It's a little confusing between the lines of the football field, the lines of the field hockey field, the lines of the soccer field, all on, on top of each other. It's kind of hard to remember which ones go to go to which sport, but Northwestern Lehigh now with the ball on their offensive side, but turn it over. Archbishop Ryan, there's a nice little touch into the offensive zone, and Westervelt trying to chase it down, but it's cleared away by Northwestern Lehigh. And it is Jarrett Lally who's going to send it back in for the Archbishop Ryan attack. And there it gets stolen away. I believe that was um, that was Joshua Zellner cleared it out for Northwestern Lehigh. So now Archbishop Ryan trying to collect their attack, but Northwestern Lehigh seems pretty content and just kind of getting it as deep back into the offensive zone on their side as they can so that they can kind of collect their defense and let the Archbishop Ryan players try and figure out what they're going to do here. Yeah, totally. It looks like uh, Northwestern Lehigh is a bit spread um, in their attack, and it, it seems to be working because it's causing Archbishop Ryan. Uh, you can see their midfield is completely open in the middle right there, and uh, they have two... Uh, midfielders back helping the defense because Northwestern Lehigh has just come out and just been full attack mode. So we have a one nothing advantage. Northwestern Lehigh, 25 minutes to go here in the first half. We'd like to thank you for joining us as Northwestern Lehigh now kicks it into the box, crosses it over weakly, trying to get it to Zellner, but uh, not able to do so. So now Archbishop Ryan now on the attack, trying to move the ball upfield. Siddiqui Fofana moves it up, but overshoots his intended target and Northwestern Lehigh is able to clear it momentarily but Archbishop Ryan heads it back into the zone and now here is Northwestern Lehigh kicking it up in the air and Zellner trying to make a play for it as uh, it was him and James McDonnell coming together they're going to say the ball went out on McDonnell so Northwestern Lehigh with a throw in Brandon Smelt's going to take it from about the 45-yard line for the football field, throws it in to Mason Brensinger. Mason looking for somebody to give the ball to, and Archbishop Ryan kicks it high up into the air, way out of bounds, and another throw in for Smelts here on the Northwestern Lehigh defensive side. It's all Northwestern Lehigh all over the place. I mean, Archbishop Ryan seems to be finding success, success on the counterattack, but it's all Northwestern Lehigh. And there was almost an opportunity for Colin Cofield as he's fighting in the corner with uh, Archbishop Ryan's, can't quite get the number over there, uh, but a good fight there in the corner. Colin Cofield trying to get control of it, not able to, and the ball goes out of bounds on Cofield. So goal kick here for Archbishop Ryan. Phillips puts his left foot into it, sends it out to midfield. And I will tell you one thing. The Northwestern Lehigh defense just is very stifling. It seems any time Archbishop tries to do anything far, there's a Northwestern Lehigh player there to intercept that pass and send it right back to him. Yeah, totally. They're, they're playing a four-back right now, and, and they just seem to be all on the same page. When one drops, all the other three drop, and, and there's... When there's one Archbishop Ryan per, uh, player attacking, there's two Northwestern Lehigh defenders right there ready to stop the ball. And it seems like they're anticipating what Archbishop Ryan is trying to do with the ball. So a throw in by Jarrett Lally bounces off of Siddiqui Fofana and uh, goes out of bounds. So another throw in for Northwestern Lehigh as they're waiting for the whistle from the referee, say they're ready. And here comes the throw and he's looking for a target. And he finds one in Colin Cofield, who gets absolutely leveled in the back. 
kind of woozy. Gets helped up by Jarrett Lally for Archbishop Ryan. So good sign of sportsmanship there. But that was a hard hit in the back for Colin Cofield. As you can see, he's kind of trying to shake off the cobwebs a little bit through that uh, that bushy hair he's got. He's got long flowing hair right above his number 22 on his jersey. So Jeff Garcia here to take the long free kick, and he throws it into the box. And unfortunately, Colin Cofield lost his footing at the top of the 18 and wasn't quite able to do anything with it. And Jason Phillips with an easy collection there sends it out to his uh yeah to his teammate timmy cliggett who now trying to move the ball in the offensive zone not able to do so northwestern lehigh once again with that defense just able to get control of it and keep archbishop ryan from really moving this ball here yeah, it seems that Archbishop Ryan just cannot find success connecting their passes in the final third. Um, and, and credit to Northwestern Lehigh's defense. They're just coming out ready to play. And, and you can see they have a high line right now because their attack is, their attack is on. And uh, they came out ready to play. They came out ready to win. Yeah, so <laughs> could be a lot of momentum. I, I mean, Archbishop Ryan came off of a big win against uh, Archbishop Wood on the sixth to advance to this tournament. So it's not like both teams haven't been playing and playing some very strong momentum ball to get to this point. So it just seems like Northwestern Lehigh right now has all the momentum. It's going to be interesting to see what Coach Haney comes out with for Archbishop Ryan to kind of counter this in the second half. We are about 20 minutes away from halftime here with a one nothing advantage for the Tigers over Archbishop Ryan. But that doesn't mean that this game is over by any stretch. Oh, no, no way. Not with when you have um, two power strikers, really, in Fofana and Kliglet, um, both with eight goals on the season, one being all-state, one being all-league. Uh, it just shows that uh, when, when they can connect those passes that they're good strikers and they're ready to attack. And here's a ball that kind of tiptoed down the far line there. For Northwestern Lehigh, I'm not sure exactly how that ball stayed in bounds, but it did, and uh, it looks like it was Matthew Johnson able to get a foot on it, trying to cross it, but crosses it out of bounds. So Jason Phillips setting up for a free kick here, for, or for a goal kick for Archbishop Ryan, sends it out to about midfield, and there it gets batted out by Colin Cofield. So a throw-in now at the midfield line for Archbishop Ryan, and a long one as it bounces off a couple of players and goes right to Ryan Baker for Northwestern Lehigh, who tries to clear it, finds a teammate on the far side. There's a hard play as the Northwestern Lehigh player went down, but he is able to get back up, get back in the play, but not able to clear it out as Archbishop Ryan still formulating an attack here. And now they're starting to bring numbers up, and there's a, a nice little touch pass by uh Fofana. Fofana. <laughs> he was looking for Westervelt. That was a bit of a uh, tricky play there. They had uh, the Northwestern Lehigh defense fold there, and I think they had he had both of us fold up here. He did. Fofana was running to the corner, kind of did a little backwards pass to Westervelt, who had a wide open lane, and credit Northwestern Lehigh for closing it uh, to keep this a one nothing advantage for them as the ball goes out of bounds on an attempt by uh, Archbishop. Ryan, so it's going to be a goal kick for Vogwill. And uh, maybe Northwestern Lehigh needs to catch their breath a little bit as they take their time with this goal kick. Yeah, and one thing I noticed uh, with Archbishop Ryan is they seem to have made an adjustment. Right now they're in a 4-1-3-2. Um, I know that's a bit of a <laughs> word jumble right there, but um, it seems that they dropped back one of their midfielders to help out their defensive line after that early goal by Northwestern Lehigh. So here's an, a crossing attempt by Northwestern Lehigh's Colin Cofield. Not able to really connect. And there's a hard shot by Mason Brensinger. But bounces off an Archbishop Ryan player. And then a hard play against Jeff Garcia. Knocks him to the ground. And uh, Northwestern Lehigh fans wanted a call on that, but no call as the ref calls advantage for Northwestern Lehigh, and here's a beautiful ball trying to find Mason Brensinger, but not able to get it through to the uh, to the attack. And now Archbishop Ryan sends it out, 
And that was very dangerous. Vogwell coming way out of the box to try to make that save, but an Archbishop Ryan player was right there. I believe it was Cliggett to uh, threaten Vogwell as he was running out, and Vogwell was able to get it past him, but a very dangerous play by the uh, by the goalkeeper there. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, something to watch out for. Uh, Vogwell was out of position there and, and almost let in a goal right there uh, to tie this game up. And those are not mistakes you want to make against an undefeated team like this. Even up one nothing, you're looking at uh, you know almost having this game tied up right there, and that's not something that Coach Hunsicker is going to be very happy about. I'm sure he's going to make sure he uh, lets his goalkeeper know what he can do better. Maybe not in the nicest of ways, but <laughs> but no, I, I got to talk to Coach Hunsicker before. I know he was he was. Definitely worried about uh, Fofana when I talked to him. Uh, said that that's where most of his game planning was through was how are we going to slow down that uh, that attack from number seven in white. And they seem to be doing it right now. We haven't really said Fofana's name too often here. Not, not too often, but I will say we did mention him once or twice, and both of those times he set up his team uh, – Right in front of uh, Northwestern Lehigh's uh, Vogwell, uh, with a pretty good chance and opportunity. So he's definitely somebody, a key player um, that I'm gonna we're gonna keep our eye on tonight. Um, I think no matter if he touches the ball where he is on the field, he's gonna make something happen for Archbishop Ryan. So a throw in for Northwestern Lehigh comes down to uh, I believe it was Caden Fitch and an Archbishop Ryan player. It was number 22, Jarrett Lally. And uh, the referee right there to call it off of the head of Caden Fitch. So throwing goes to Archbishop Ryan. And now the referee holding up play a little bit. I believe we had a substitution on the far side. So um, holding up play there is everybody gets set. Throw in by Archbishop Ryan. Gets sent back by Northwestern Lehigh towards the Archbishop Ryan net. And now the ball being played back and forth across the midfield line once again. And there's a hard play. And they're going to call it against Northwestern Lehigh. It was Eric Lopez and Philip Taylor both going for the ball at the same time. And they're saying Eric Lopez got the worst of it for Archbishop Ryan. So they're going to give a free kick here to them as Owen Stock comes in to take it at about the 45-yard line of the football field, right around the midfield circle. So he boots it way down deep into the Northwestern Lehigh box, and nobody's able to make contact with it. And it is a goal kick for Northwestern Lehigh as Archbishop Ryan kind of gives up a uh, gives up a, a key opportunity there as uh, another substitution, I believe, Seth Brady just came back into the game. And you saw uh, number 13, Owen Stock, who he was aiming for right on that uh, uh, free kick from the 45-yard line, and it was no one other than Siddiqui Fofana. So it seems like on <laughs> set pieces, he's going to be their go-to guy. Um, from I know we're at a far vantage point, but he seems to be pretty tall, have some height out there. So, um Again, missed opportunity there. I, I, I thought he could have put a head on the ball or at least send it closer to goal, but uh, yeah. So now the Northwestern Lehigh goal kick comes out to midfield, headed by Colin Cofield there. Trying to get control of it was Caden Fitch to send it back over as we have 14 minutes here left in the first half. Still a one nothing ball game for the Tigers over Archbishop Ryan. An early one, um, I believe it was Colin Cofield, if I remember correctly. I, I don't have my notes in front of me. Uh, that scored the goal. It yeah. was actually number 22. Colin Cofield. Colin Cofield, you are correct. I will give you that. <laughs> Good memory. We'll call it that. Uh, um, but, yeah, Colin Cofield with the, uh, with the early goal to – Give the Tigers a lead. Give them an ability to breathe a little bit. Like we said, a one nothing game against this team that went down one nothing against Arch Archbishop Wood and ended up winning two to one. So um, one nothing advantage is not anything to to really breathe on. And 
Maybe another goal will get you a little bit more breathing room, but I think it's going to take another two or three to really say this one's going to be a comfortable one. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree with you on that. You can just see that Archbishop Ryan seems to finally kind of be fi fi finding their footing here in the game, but um, I wonder if that was Northwestern Lehigh's game plan. Come in this game, score early, and then let's play our defensive mindset shape um, and try and hold off this game, but I don't know how long you can hold off Fofana and Kliglet. Both have eight goals on the season. So there was a Ryan Baker throw in, essentially, essentially a corner for this Northwestern Lehigh team as it gets into the box. But Archbishop Ryan able to clear it out as Northwestern Lehigh did have an opportunity. And now they're moving the attack back up into the zone. Seth Brady trying to find Joshua Zellner in the box, but not able to get it to him as an Archbishop Ryan player. Able to play some pretty good defense there. And that one was taken. Ron Hevner um, able to take it away from Northwestern Lehigh player and try to run with it, but not able to do so. And it looks like we may be getting a free kick for Northwestern Lehigh here about 30 yards out. Yeah, that's a bit of an interesting foul there. I thought they both fell on top of the ball, but this is an important free kick here for Northwestern Lehigh. They're, the ball is placed right at the 20-yard line. It's only a two-man wall for Archbishop Ryan. And it's chipped into the box and an easy play for Jason Phillips to get his hands on it as it came right down to him. And he left foot to the punt out to about the, almost all the way into the box. And now here's an opportunity for Archbishop Ryan, but not able to get any real effort into that shot. Uh, I can't quite get his number here. It was number 20. Uh, so Timmy Cliggett. Once again, making a, an impact there, but the ball cleared out of bounds, but it's going to be another corner for Archbishop Ryan. And the ball comes in, and it's headed around and bounces harmlessly out of bounds from Northwestern Lehigh. And both teams trying to plead their case, but they're going to give it a goal kick to Northwestern Lehigh. It really could have gone either way. There was a lot of bodies right there in the box. Yeah, I agree. I I definitely think they were looking for Fofana there again. Um, they seem to look for him um, in the air a lot on a free kick corner. But, um, yeah, that could have went either way. I, I, there was enough players in the box to, you know, head that in, potentially get a rebound uh, for Archbishop Ryan. But uh, another good corner look, but another missed opportunity. So Northwestern Lehigh with control of the ball. Colin Cofield on the near side, trying to get it around an Archbishop Ryan player. And that was a hard play by Colin Cofield against number 12, Frank Monaco for Archbishop Ryan. We haven't said his name yet tonight um, as they were both fighting for the ball. And Colin Cofield just kind of drove through Monaco instead of going for the ball. So free kick going to Archbishop Ryan just short of midfield. And a little stutter step there from Owen Stock as his team wasn't quite ready yet for their attack. And now there is the long kick into the box. And it's going to go out of bounds on Archbishop Ryan for a goal kick for Northwestern Lehigh. So Archbishop Ryan really is getting some good opportunity here. But this defense for Northwestern Lehigh really, really, really stifling. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you on that. It seems that Northwestern uh, Lehigh's defense is just playing as a four-back cohesive unit right now, and um, they're really working together. They know that the ball most likely is going to Fofana on a free kick or a set piece. Um, so it looks like they're almost double marking him and leaving another runner um, towards the uh, end of uh, alone, basically, in the box. But, uh, yeah, it's, let's just see how long uh, this Northwestern Lehigh defense can keep up and hopefully that they can turn it into some offense and, and take some pressure off the defense. So Cliggett trying to send it up to Fofana as uh, not able to do so. He's, he had about five black jerseys around him for Northwestern Lehigh. And now they're moving the ball up their offensive way on the far sideline. And this ball is going to trail out of bounds. And I'm not sure who it went off of. I didn't see the official make a call. So it looks like it's going to be out on Archbishop Ryan. So a Northwestern Lehigh throw in here. It looks like it's going to be Matthew Johnson taking the taking the throw. 
So a long throw in, headed by Archbishop Ryan. Headed around a couple more times, and there's Colin Cofield trying to get advantage of it. And Joshua Zellner trying to keep it in his zone, but not able to do so. Beautiful slide tackle, but the ball gets almost by him off the foot of Cliggett. And it came down to Brandon Smeltz, who was able to finally clear it out. And now Northwestern Lehigh moving the ball around a little bit, but gives it up to Archbishop, Archbishop Ryan. And now Northwestern Lehigh trying to formulate an attack here as he, it looks like it was Cofield trying to find Brensinger, but not able to do so. Brensinger kind of moved off the ball a little bit awkwardly. And now Ryan Baker having to chase it down the far side of the field. That's going to go out of bounds, though, for a Northwestern Lehigh Tigers goal kick. And another goal kick for Vogwell as it seems that Archbishop Ryan really trying to put the pressure on this team now. Yeah, although I am a bit confused with the Archbishop Ryan attack right now because it just seems that they're leaving uh, Fofana and Gliglet, um just alone up top, and, and they just seem to be sitting basically in an eight-back. And here's a beautiful play to Fofana, and he can't get a good foot on it. He tried left-footing it on the run right in front of the net, and he kicks it over. A beautiful setup by Cliggett. Floats a nice little touch pass over everybody's head, fell right to the feet of Fofana, who was running through everybody, and he wasn't quite able to control it, and he knew he had to get a shot off or else it was going to go right out of bounds. And a beautiful effort, but another missed opportunity for Archbishop Ryan. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty hard a ball to bring down. Uh, he chested that down to his foot and and really tried to get a really tried to get it on goal, but um, just. I know in professional ball that's even hard to do. So uh, congrats to him for even bringing that ball down. Yeah. And they're going to call a handball here on Colin Cofield as the ball kind of got kicked towards his head. So he had to be defensive about it. So that he didn't get a, another face full of ball. And luckily, it's a little warmer out today than it was on Tuesday of last week when they played Southern Lehigh to a one nothing. uh one nothing result in overtime to move on from the semifinals of the Colonial League and face Blue Mountain in the finals where they did end up winning 3 nothing on, uh, I believe it was Saturday. And there's a hard foul around the midfield line for Northwestern Lehigh. So they're going to get a free kick here right on the 50-yard line of the football field. So uh, it's going to be, looks like it is uh, Lucas Van Lierup Going to take the kick just in front of the midfield line, actually. So a little too far out for any sort of shot attempt, but getting it into the box definitely will help. And there's a push. Not called by the officials. My goodness, Archbishop Ryan just got away with a massive push before the ball even got to the group. And the refs say play on. And now Archbishop Bryan getting a little chippy out here, pushing players down for Northwestern Lehigh. And there's Seth Brady. He's got a shot. It's off the post. I think it went out of bounds, but it bounced around a couple of different times. And now an Archbishop Bryan player down in the end zone. That actually looked like it 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 went off, but it... um. It looked like it went off the post, but the outside of the goal on the post. So it looked from our angle up here like that that hit the inside of the post, but uh, I believe that went off the outside. Um. And it was number three, Sean Horve, a junior for, or excuse me, a senior for Archbishop Ryan who was down. He gets up. He seems to be walking all right. He was, his teammates kind of had to be pulled back a little bit. Seemed like it was going to be a little more serious, but seems to be walking off under his own power. But he's going to take a seat for a little bit. It looks like he might be holding his back, so maybe yeah. just a, a, a spasm. Yeah, that's something to watch out for um, with Coach uh, Hanny uh, pointing out that Sean Harvey is a starting cornerback. Um, he center back, excuse me, and he's a captain senior, and he really leads this back line here for Archbishop Ryan, who – has already been put to the test so much by this Northwestern Lehigh uh, attack. So that's something to watch out for to see if he returns. So it looks like Evan O'Neill, the junior, is going to come in for Sean. And uh, he's going to take over that, that middle back 
uh, position as we have a throw in for Archbishop Ryan now as he throws it in, trying to get it to Fofana, but Northwestern Lehigh able to head it away before it gets to him. And now a battle for it. Sends it all the way back to Jason Phillips for Archbishop Ryan, and he puts his left foot into it, gets it out to about midfield where uh, Eric Lopez is there waiting for it. And now cleared back into the offensive zone, headed by Ryan Baker for Northwestern Lehigh as now the defense has numbers against Archbishop Ryan's offense. But here it's headed in. And now here's a beautiful opportunity for... S oh, no, and it's an own goal by Northwestern Lehigh. Oh, my goodness. That is heartbreaking for the Tigers. Brandon Smeltzer. Oh, no. <laughs> he had a wide open opportunity to clear it. There wasn't another Archbishop Ryan player around and he just tapped it into his own net. And you got you want to talk about people who are sick. There's three minutes left in the half, and now it is a 1-1 ball game. And now Archbishop Ryan claiming all the momentum in this one with an unfortunate own goal for Northwestern Lehigh. That almost looked like he, he went to clear it. But instead of clearing it, he, he ended up hitting it with his right foot when he needed to hit it with his left foot. And, and, and that's that's heartbreaking for, for the senior, uh, Brandon Smeltz, uh, defense, defensive center back there. And, and let's just hope that um, Northwestern Lehigh can come back from that. It's now tied 1-1. Uh, so basically, I like to say we're back at 0-0 here in soccer. It's a new ball game, so... My goodness, what a turn of events here for Northwestern Lehigh. And, and they're going to give the goal to Tim Cliggett, who was the last Archbishop Ryan to touch the ball, I guess. Uh, Emily Chaney not, <laughs> not exactly agreeing with that call, but I don't know if it's I, – I know it would be considered an own goal in professional soccer. I don't know what the rules are in high that school. Is, that so is a very good point. That I don't know true. if it's last touch um, – gets credit for the goal so give that one to Cliggett that's his ninth of the season um, but with a much needed assist from Brandon Smeltz and that is definitely definitely something that uh, he needs to shake off because as he's a senior so you know you you would think you know experience would say that uh, he needs he should know better, and, and it's just an honest mistake, honestly. So Archbishop Ryan getting a free kick here at midfield. Let's just see how um, these last – we have a little under two minutes here to go. We're tied 1-1 uh, here in the uh, Varsity Boys Soccer Round of 16 game, Northwestern Lehigh versus Archbishop Ryan, if you're just joining us here on Penn Sports Radio. Um we had two goals so far, and one came in the 34th minute, and the other one just came in the third with three minutes to go here in the uh, first half on a mutual goal, I guess we can call it. Sure, we'll call it that. <laughs> uh, Tim Cliggett getting the credit for the Archbishop Ryan goal that was tapped in by Brandon Smeltz. And now Vogwell sending it out to midfield as we... Time starts ticking down here. Should be getting the one minute to go call from our PA announcer here at Northwestern Lehigh as the ball kind of being played around midfield by both teams. And there's a there's a steal from Eric Lopez. He tries finding an open player, but nobody able to meet the run of the ball. And Vogwell easily picks that one up and gets ready to boot it back out. One minute left here in the first half. So Archbishop Ryan going into halftime with the momentum as Northwestern Lehigh is going to try and make an opportunity here for themselves uh, towards the end of this first half and reclaim that lead, but not able to do it as the ball gets sent back to midfield. And some fancy footwork here by the Tigers. Colin Cofield works his way around the defenders, trying to make something happen. Chips it forward, but right to an Archbishop Ryan player. And 
the ball still in the zone, but not any longer as Archbishop Ryan clears it out, but not for very long. This ball is being sent back and forth over the uh, the attacking third for Northwestern Lehigh. So 10 seconds left here in the first half as the ball comes down, and that will do it for the first half of play here at Northwestern Lehigh. So we'll step aside, come back, and talk about this crazy first half that we saw here at Northwestern Lehigh. We go into the break tied at one. Northwestern Lehigh and Archbishop Ryan in the opening round of PIAA Soccer State Tournament. You're listening to Northwestern Lehigh Boys Soccer Action here on Penn Sports Radio. With the vast materials and professional standards, Edge One Property Services of New Tripoli is your home for commercial and industrial residential services. This includes cleaning solutions, painting, pavement solutions, snow, ice management, and landscape. Edge One Services' sophisticated management team can provide maintenance services to the commercial, industrial, educational, and HOA community sectors. Give your property the Edge One effect. For more information, call 484 247 4240 or go to edgeoneservices.com. DJI Insurance is an independent agency with over 50 years combined industry experience and our clients are our top priority. Because we work with multiple insurance carriers, it allows us to provide options for coverages and competitive pricing. We take pride in serving our policyholders and will customize a policy that suits your specific needs. Consider DJI Insurance Agency, your insurance compass, and let us assist you in navigating life's insurance needs. Nutripoli Bank is the bank you and your family have come to know and love. That's because Nutripoli Bank treats each and every customer as an individual, encouraging them to dream big and reach for their goals. Since 1910, Nutripoli Bank has ensured the financial well being of all their customers. When you're ready to take that first step, Nutripoli Bank will be right by your side. Nutripoli Bank has three locations in the Lehigh Valley, Nutripoli, Orfield, and Emmaus. As a community bank serving the Lehigh Valley for over 100 years, Nutripoli Bank knows how important it is to offer their customers the convenience of cutting-edge banking technology coupled with a local presence that only a true community bank can provide. That's why Nutripoli Bank's mobile banking app, online banking platform, and website are all designed to meet your modern banking needs. For more information, go to NutripoliBank.net. That's NutripoliBank.net. Whatever stage of life and career you find yourself in, Valor Wealth Management can help you make choices to benefit your tomorrow. Located in downtown Easton, Pennsylvania, Valor Wealth Management consists of a team of advisors with experience and a variety of tools necessary for their clients' success. President Michael McGuire has over 20 years of experience working with clients in the Lehigh Valley. Check out their website, valoradvisor.com, and for further information, call 610-295-5593. And welcome back to Northwestern Lehigh High School, where we are at halftime here of boys' soccer state tournament action between Northwestern Lehigh and Archbishop Ryan. And definitely... Uh, Definitely presented with an entertaining first half, Emily. What, what were your takes on it? Yes, entertaining would be like <laughs> you actually stole my word. Um, but yeah, that was a great first half of soccer here um, for the bar first round of states, and, and it's what you expect. It's it's a good game. It's a battle going back and forth. But I gotta be honest, I think I give the first half to Northwestern Lehigh, and what I mean by that is that they just dominated um, the attack. They were strong defensively up until the last three minutes of the game. And uh, I know there were two goals, so we're tied 1-1. Uh, Northwestern Lehigh jumped out to an early lead with a goal by Colin Cofield, number 22, in the 34th minute. And then after that, it was pretty much the rest of the half, Northwestern Lehigh. Um, Archbishop Ryan had a few counterattacks. Um, they were looking for Fofana with two or three set pieces. They had two corners, but I thought they missed a couple opportunities there. And then... Had a great attack, three minutes to go, and, and I guess we're giving that goal to, goal to Gliglet, but uh, pretty much an own goal there by Northwestern Lehigh. 
Yeah, and, and an unfortunate one. You could definitely see Brandon Smeltz really, uh, really kicking himself. No pun intended on that one. And uh, I, I replaying it in my mind, just watching it happen. I think he was trying to actually, in, instead of clearing it out, I think he was just trying to pass it back to Vogwell. And Vogwell, unfortunately, was on the ground, so Smeltz didn't really get a chance to see that and tried just chipping it back to him and ended up chipping it back into his, into his net. Um, so unfortunate there that that's the result of the goal, but I'm, I'm sure Archbishop Bryan's going to take all the... Uh, all the, the advantages and opportunities that they can get to uh, keep this one close, especially as they were being outplayed in that one uh, in that first half to a point. They did have a lot of control of the ball, but Northwestern Lehigh's defense just very stifling and not really letting them get to their players, Cliggett and, and Fofana, to formulate their attacks. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And, and just looking... And right now it's pretty much uh, a defensive game, um, which sounds crazy because the score is 1-1, but um, it's been all North, uh, Northern Lehigh's uh, Northwestern defense. Lehigh. Sorry, Northwestern Lehigh's defense. And they're just, they're good. They're good back there. They're solid. They're playing together. They're playing as a unit. Um, and you can see that, unfortunately, um, there was a goal given up. But other than that, I, I got to give Northwestern Lehigh's defense a uh, gold medal for for that first half because honestly they really stifled Fofana and Gliglet who both uh combined have uh 17 goals now on the season and and just something with Archbishop Ryan is is they seem to have spread the um their field out and they're trying to spread the ball around but they're really no help up top with from Fofana and Gliglet because they can't seem to connect from the um, their defensive half to the final third, and and I need I want would like them to see if they could connect their passes through the midfield. Uh, James McDonald uh, was a key player to watch, and we haven't said his name much at all this game. Yeah, I think we said his name once, and it was on a on a uh, fought ball at midfield where he ended up getting the advantage on it and claiming a free kick for Archbishop Bryan. Uh, we spoke about it early, and it seemed like they had gone away with it. Um, but we said Westervelt's name so very often for Archbishop Ryan, for the Raiders, and as they got later in the half, it seemed like the play stopped going through him and was pretty much trying to just long ball it to the front line. Yeah, I agree. They they were playing a bunch of through balls, and, and they found some success in that, but, but not much, honestly. And, and something else uh, I wanted to point out is that um, Northwestern Lehigh's um, attack. They seem to be rotating their players up top, and, and they're switching it from the far side to the near side, and they're finding success on both sides. They're staying wide, and they're really passing the ball from left to right, and, and they just seem to have good vision tonight on the attack. So we're getting down to the end of halftime here. We're going to step aside one quick break. When we come back, we're going to bring you the second half of some exciting soccer action here from Northwestern Lehigh. You're listening to Northwestern Lehigh Boys Soccer Action here on Penn Sports Radio. Let HTSS help you get the job that'll get you going in the right direction. HTSS and Emmaus is your staffing solution, and right now they're hiring for customer service call center reps, IT engineers and data entry, as well as sales and marketing, administrative office staff, accounting, financing, logistics, and distribution. Get started down the path to employment with HTSS. To set up an appointment, call 610-432-4161 or apply online at hts-inc.com. That's hts-inc.com. The Northwestern Lehigh Educational Foundation is a nonprofit organization that supports the educational goals of the Northwestern Lehigh School. Since inception, the foundation has funded more than $1.3 million in innovative projects throughout the district that would not have otherwise been funded. The NWLEF relies on funding through donations from the local community and annual fundraising events. You can help by becoming a sponsor, making a tax-deductible donation, attending one of their annual events, or volunteering. There's never been a more critical time to support our schools. See what you can do to support the Northwestern Lehigh Educational Foundation. Learn more at www.nwlef.org. And welcome back to Northwestern Lehigh as we get you set for the second half here in 
Nutripoli as the Tigers and the Raiders come into this half tied at one. And now we play 0-0 ball for the second half. And it, 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 let's just go back to what we've seen so far. So Northwestern Lehigh really has controlled most of the ball, uh, mo the ball the most of the first half. Archbishop Bryan has had little spurts here and there where they've had good control, but Northwestern Lehigh's defense always seems to have numbers over Archbishop Bryan's attack and is able to clear it out. So it's really going to be a matter of whose defense is going to hold out the longest against the attack based off of you know what we've seen so far. And I'll tell you right now, Coach Haney's probably getting his players to go – we got to get it to number seven. We got to get it to Fofana. We got to get it to, to number 20, Cliggett. And for Coach Hunsicker, it's probably just a matter of who won. They have so many opportunities to shoot as the ball gets sent up into the attack zone for Archbishop Ryan and trying to get control of it. It was number nine for the Raiders. Teddy Westervelt, and as we said, he's getting back into the uh, into the attack there, but his a attempt at a shot way wide. So goal kick here for Vogwell. He puts his right foot into it, sends it out the midfield at the waiting Jeff Garcia, but it gets headed around by Frank Mon uh, Monaco for the Raiders of Archbishop Ryan. And now it's a foot race to try to clear it out, and it gets away from. Uh, Philip Taylor for Northwestern Lehigh and Ron Hevener able to take it, but now Northwestern Lehigh with the run up the far or the near side. Matthew Johnson trying to do something gets fought off the ball. No call from the referee there, and now we have another back and forth battle around midfield trying to see who gets an advantage. And now it's an Archbishop Ryan throwing. Yeah, something to point out um, that we didn't talk about at halftime is the physicality of this game. Um, it's, it's a much more physical game um, than I think we both anticipated. And, and Archbishop Ryan is not afraid to go in on a hard tackle. Um, and it's definitely played a factor, I think, of, uh, in benefiting Northwestern Lehigh because there's been a couple fouls that happen right outside of the 18 that sets up a good free kick. So that's something to keep our eyes on. Uh, no cards yet this game, but definitely something to watch. And the officials seem to be just kind of letting them play, too. Um, there's been a few calls that weren't made that were I don't want to say obvious because they obviously weren't called but um, you know ones that you would think would be called but it seems the officials are just kind of being a little lenient keeping the whistle in the pocket um, and just kind of letting the kids play out there which is nice to see but you don't want to see it get too far to the point where this game gets out of control and that's when you're going to start seeing cards get thrown Exactly, and uh, I always laugh. One of the oldest tricks in the book on a throw-in in soccer is, oh, did you, I, you know, let me just move up 10, 15 yards and take the throw-in. And uh, we had a bit of a stop of play right there as uh, Archbishop Ryan was told to move back from the ref. But, you know, sometimes players can get away with that. Hey, it's it's whatever advantage you can get, right? True. And uh, sometimes you want to move the ball up, sometimes you want to move the ball back. It depends on what's going to give you the best opportunity as Northwestern Lehigh now with the throw-in. A hard throw in and a hard bump off the ball there by number five, James McDonald for the Raiders. And that ball gets cleared way out of bounds into the bleachers. And it's going to be an Archbishop Ryan throw in on the far side of the field there, right in front of the Northwestern Lehigh bench. So a fight for the ball, and it turns into a free kick for Archbishop Ryan. The ball gets moved up and moved back and taken between the 46 and 47 yard lines of the football field on the far side between the benches. So we want to thank you for tuning in here to Penn Sports Radio presentation of Northwestern Lehigh Boys Soccer Action. Make sure you download our app on Apple and Android devices as well as check us out on PennSportsRadio.com. We are also on Facebook and Twitter. So check out those outlets for schedule updates as we move into tournament season here and i'm sure we're going to be having more games coming up and uh so make sure you check out those outlets for our updated schedule and maybe we'll be seeing northwestern lehigh on saturday when they play upper moreland uh maybe we'll see archbishop ryan who knows um 
But either way, the winner of this one moves on to the quarterfinals in state play as they will take on upper, number one, Upper Moreland. Again, that game on Saturday. Here's your shot on goal by Archbishop Ryan, and it gets sent right to Austin Vogwell, who falls on it. It was a nice hard shot there. And just good placement. Uh, it was Cliggett again. And good placement by Vogwell, able to fall on that one and keep it a tie ball game here as we move on in the second half. About 35 minutes left in regulation here. And is it too early to bring out that that dreaded word that we all hate? I would say yes, but since the girls game went into that dreaded uh, lovely word that we like to point out and then penalty kicks, um, I don't think it's too early, but I think it, in this stage you expect in a round of 16 game with two winners of district play, like you expect this game to be physical and, and to go into that overtime. So Ryan Baker with his cannon arm throwing into the box. Brushed away by Jason Phillips, but kept in the box. And a header attempt gets scooped up by Jason Phillips. And that was an interesting turn of events there for both teams as Northwestern Lehigh gets a couple opportunities there. And Jason Phillips stands tall for the Raiders and keeps this ball game tied. That was definitely a huge save right there by Phillips, uh, the sophomore goalkeeper. He uh, he read he read his line. It was crowded in the box, and all he could do was punch that away. And luckily, there was no rebound there um, by Northwestern Lehigh. But a huge save, and um, I think a missed opportunity there for Northwestern Lehigh. Absolutely a missed opportunity. They had numbers in the box, but Jason Phillips first gets a fist through about seven different bodies from both teams. Clears it away momentarily. Northwestern Lehigh able to get control of it. Taps it back into the box and tries to head it in, but not able to do so. So, uh, like you said, a missed opportunity there. And a couple of throw-ins by Wallander. And another throw-in for Wallander. That's, this is going to be his third one in a row in a matter of 10 seconds here. Trying to find Matthew Johnson, but Johnson not... Not the biggest player. The, the freshman's only 5'2", so it seems like he can kind of get pushed around a little easy. He, he is very scrappy. He's very quick. Uh, but he's being uh, played on a very a much bigger wing on the defense there in um, Matthew Kropolak. So Matthew Johnson trying to use his speed, but kind of getting overpowered there as this ball gets moved around by Northwestern Lehigh. Just inside the midfield, finally clears it down to the offensive Zach, uh, attack. And here's Seth Brady. He gets all the way down to the end. He doesn't have numbers, but he's trying to keep it alive, and it gets kicked out of bounds by Archbishop Ryan. And it's going to be a throw-in for Northwestern Lehigh deep into the attack zone. And here comes Ryan Baker once again with his throw-in power. This is essentially, and we said this against Southern Lehigh, in this position, this is essentially a, a corner, a, an unofficial corner for Northwestern Lehigh for the amount of power that he can get behind his throw-in. He can get it clear into the box, and he does it again, sets it up right in front of the box, but Archbishop Ryan clears it out, and now fighting for the ball right around midfield is Archbishop Ryan, and it looked like uh, Wallander, Jared Wallander. And now the ball getting sent in, and it sounds like... a few upset fans here. I'm not sure which on, side. Uh, actually, on both sides, I was just about to point out, we have a decent-sized crowd on hand. Um, obviously, uh, due to COVID, we uh, are just fortunate and happy that this game is being played, but uh, we got some uh, angry fans on both sides due to this game getting a bit chippy and a bit physical. Uh, the refs letting them play, but uh, it's definitely something to continue to keep our eyes on. Um, watching, you know, where the fouls are coming and, and where they're being placed on the field because that one set piece can truly make a difference. So Northwestern Lehigh with control of it right now is the ball getting passed around midfield again and moving around. And now Jared Wallander sends it in but overshoots his intended target, Jeff Garcia. And Archbishop Ryan now trying to make a run up, but Wallander trying to pass it back. 
And they're going to call a penalty, or not a penalty, but a foul on Ron Hevener for the Raiders and turn this into a long free kick for Northwestern Lehigh. Wallander and Hevener fighting for the ball, and the officials say that advantage was not on Northwestern Lehigh's side, and Wallander was fouled. And free kick goes to Northwestern Lehigh, sends it in, and now a call in the other direction. <laughs> Now they're starting to pull the whistle out a little bit more. I think they saw that the game was getting a little bit out of control, and now a flip. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, this uh... – So originally the – sorry to cut you off, but originally the call was for Archbishop Ryan. Then they thought about it, flipped the call now to Northwestern Lehigh, who gets a free kick about 43 yards out. Just something that I think that the ref needs to take control uh, the game a little bit now. It, it is getting a bit chippy. It is getting a bit, um, you know, physical now. So uh, the whistle is coming out, um, but it seems to be coming out only on certain calls. So it's just it's got to be consistent and, and, and just make sure to take control of this game. So the free kick was sent deep into the box, but Jason Phillips easily able to corral it and now – Northwestern Lehigh trying to play defense as Archbishop Ryan starts moving up on their attack. There's Cliggett with an with a opportunity on the far side of the field, but cut off by Northwestern Lehigh's defense. And now we get, with 29 minutes left here in regulation, it is an attack attempt, and here's a beautiful opportunity by Archbishop Ryan and... The ball sits at the feet of Fofana. He goes to take a left-footed shot and just misdirects the kick way out of bounds. A beautiful opportunity for the Raiders that gets thrown by the wayside by the one of the top players on their team. Yeah, I, I actually thought that got deflected the way it was misdirected there. Um, but they're giving uh, Vogel a goal kick here. So, uh, yeah, two missed opportunities by uh, Fofana, but... You definitely know that's in the back of his head, and, and if anything, that motivates a player. And that's a very scary thought, and that's a very scary play as Matthew Johnson gets taken down at the track here at Northwestern Lehigh, kind of shaking his hands, getting the gravel out. He looks like he might be a little hurt, shaking his wrist. So they're going to bring in a substitution for him. It looks like it's going to be Philip Taylor, the junior, to take Johnson's winger position. And Wallander going to get the throw in here for Northwestern Lehigh. He throws it up, trying to find it. looked like it was Seth Brady he was trying to get it to. And another throwing attempt coming for Wallander as it goes out of bounds on the Raiders. Yeah, uh, definitely as we keep calling out, especially me, keep calling out uh, physical play here by both sides. So, um and it just seems that neither team is finding their attack. They're both trying to play the long ball over the top, as uh, Archbishop Bryan just did that right there. Sends it down deep into the attack zone, but no numbers there for the Raiders as they try taking... Uh... And here's an opportunity for Archbishop Bryan. He shoots, and it goes wide. Just wide. It was uh, Ron Hevener coming on the far left wing. Trying to make a beautiful shot. He had open space, but since it just wide over the RN Tigers in the end zone, and Fogwell, a little out of position there, gets gets a uh, gracious uh, opportunity. Not necessarily a save, but definitely one he's going to try to not have happen again. As this game stays tied at one with just about 25 minutes here left in the second half. And now Archbishop Ryan on the attack again. There's a hard tackle. A hard tackle by Northwestern Lehigh. And I'm not sure if they're going to give it a call or if they're, they're just going to call it. Yep, they're just going to call it out of bounds. So it's a throw in for Archbishop Ryan on the far side, right around the 10 yard line of the football field. It just seems that Archbishop Ryan has come out in this second half, especially in the last five minutes or so, and and have just hit full throttle right now. They're they're just in the attacking mindset. Their back line is in a high press right now, and they just seem to be finding success on that uh, 
far side connecting um, through Roy Hevner uh, to number 20, Timmy Gilgit. Um, and Fofana's in the in the mix right now and just seem to be all attacked from Archbishop Ryan right now. And they're really putting that back line of Northwestern Lehigh to the test. So here's an, a ball that gets kicked out of bounds by the Raiders. So another Tigers throw in. Another Tigers throw in deep in the attack zone. And that means the arms of number four, Ryan Baker, coming in again. Let's see what he can do with this throw in. Is he takes a big wind and throw, gets it into the box, but it's headed away by Archbishop Ryan. And guess what we're going to get, folks? Another, <laughs> another throw in by Ryan Baker. This time... Closer to the, uh, he's kind of, he's in line with almost the six yard box. And he throws it in. And Jason Phillips easily corrals that one and right in front of the attacker of uh, Northwestern Lehigh, I believe it was Colin Cofield that was there. And that deep kick gets headed sideways by Lucas Van, uh, Van Leerup. And goes out of bounds, so a throw-in for Archbishop Ryan. Not quite sure who he was heading that to, but there wasn't anybody there for him to really pass it to. We just saw a bit of miscommunication there from Fofana and Kliglet, um, who have been playing with each other now for two years. And uh, Fofana headed that down, but just a uh, miscommunication there. So I think if those two can can figure out uh, this back line of Northwestern Lehigh, I think that might make the difference in the next goal for uh, Archbishop Ryan. So Northwestern Lehigh bringing in some fresh legs. It's number three, Caden Fitch, coming in for Seth Brady on the front line. So we have another long throw-in attempt from number four, Ryan Baker, as he winds up, gets a long run, and throws it in. And there was an opportunity for Northwestern Lehigh, but Archbishop Ryan able to get the first foot on it. Clears it back out to about midfield, where it's gathered up by Jared Wallander. And now Philip Taylor trying to move it up. Gets it to Caden Fitch. Caden Fitch moving up the near sideline. Tries to cross it, but it's blocked by an Archbishop Ryan player. Sent back out to midfield. And now Archbishop Ryan not necessarily have the numbers, but definitely have the speed. Sends it up to Fofana. Fofana on the far sideline now, waiting for his attacking help. Sends it in, and there's a beautiful shot. Vogwell able to jump and get a couple of hands on it and send it out. So this is going to be another corner for Archbishop Ryan, only their second of the night. And now, I believe actually, I believe it's their third. It's their third corner of the night. So they're going to take it on the near side to our right. We know who they want to go to here as well. Sets up the left foot kick. It falls to the feet of Kligan and it gets kicked in by Fofana. Fofana giving the Raiders the 2-1 advantage here with 22 minutes left in the second half. And heartbreak for the Tigers right now. They need to shake that one off and collect themselves. There's still a lot of time in this game, but what a beautiful cross. Click it with a beautiful control. He goes for the for the shot. Vogwell deflects it, but doesn't get a hand on it. Fofana standing right there, able to clean that one up, put it in the back of the net for the Raiders. And now Northwestern Lehigh has some work to do here with about 22 minutes left in this game. Yeah, um, I'm in a bit of uh, disbelief because that was that was a great pass and and just put back right there by Fofana and uh, Kliglet, and you could just see why they work so well together. Um, they just read each other well, and they read each other off the ball, and, and that was a big goal for Fofana to put that in the back and of the it's net like, right there. And it's like you said earlier, he's not going to let those get away from him too much longer, and sure enough, he becomes the deciding factor in this game as we have another Ryan Baker throw-in from about the six yard, about the goal line of the football field. That's where he's going to be throwing it out from. Gets his running start, throws it in. Headed around a couple of times. Somebody get a foot on it. Jason Phillips clears it out, sends it back in, and the defender for Archbishop Ryan able to clear it away momentarily. 
But Northwestern Lehigh with a couple of great opportunities there had Jason Phillips out of place and almost had the equalizer right after Fofana gave the Raiders the lead. Wow, that was just this game's not over. That's all I can say is is as much as it's a 2-1 game, Northwestern Lehigh is now down, but they're not out. I mean, that was just a great little sequence there by them. And, and honestly, Archbishop Ryan got lucky that I believe it was number 13, Owen Stock, who was in the right place at the right time and got his body somehow on that ball. If not, it would be a tie game right now. Yeah, Owen Stock filling the space that Jason Phillips was not able to after having to make one great save. Owen Stock getting the second grade save, able to clear it out, and now Northwestern Lehigh needs to sit here going, what do we need to do to put this ball in the back of the net again? Now Fofana trying to call for a handball was Northwestern Lehigh. And another another field goal attempt for uh, Archbishop Ryan. Uh, as they get it across the bar, and another theoretical three points for them. Well, in our theoretical football game, we're tied 3-3. There we go. <laughs> but in this game right now, we have about a little over 20 minutes left here in the second half with uh, Archbishop Ryan leading 2-0 here. Uh, round of 16 states here for Varsity Boys Soccer. And the winner of this game moves on to play number one, Upper Moreland, on Saturday at a field to be determined right now. So... Uh, Wallander, they're saying he was going for the, the throw in, but they're saying he was up about seven yards too far. So they move him back across midfield, throws it in. There was a little bit of a push there by Hevener for Archbishop Bryan, but again, no call. And now Archbishop Bryan trying to formulate an attack. The defense able to get through it and win the free kick for Northwestern Lehigh. So. Archbishop Bryan was looking like they were ready to hit up a couple of runs there. They had Fofana and Cliggett running through the defense wide open, and they were able to get in. Here's a hard play on Colin Cofield as he's going to get the call called against him. Yeah, that was a nice little run of play um, passing. I think that was between Fofana, Lopez, and uh, Roy Hevner there um, coming up the near side. Kind of had the defense on their heels right now and and this northwestern lehigh defense that we rave so much about in the uh in the first half seems to lose a bit of steam here in the second half as i say that i take a look out there and click it's actually not out there right now um you got hevner and fofana playing the front line you have lopez and um it's james mcdonald playing the mid so the number 20 is not out there and there's a hard foul not called by number 15, Matthew Kropolak for the Raiders. He ran into Caden Fitch so hard. Caden Fitch is very shaken up. He got up for a moment. Now he's back down into a squat position and sits back down just around midfield. That was a hard play. I'm surprised it wasn't called immediately until Fitch wasn't getting back up. Yeah, that... um. For our listeners, that was a, a header uh, from number 15 um, on Kropolak. Uh, Kropolak on Archbishop Ryan. But um, number three for um, Northwestern Lehigh, Caden Fitch, just they both went up for the ball, but it seems that number 15 for Archbishop Ryan and got an elbow to uh, Fitch right there. And I don't know if it was to the upper body, head, neck region, but uh, definitely, definitely a little nerve wracking. So they're, we're working on Caden Fitch. We're going to step aside here real quick as he – actually, no, he's up now, so we're actually going to keep it here. He's going to walk off the field under his own power. Very scary moment there. He, he kind of rolled around a little bit, and when he went to stand back up, he sat right back down, almost like he got hit in the head. So hopefully he's okay, no sort of concussion or anything. And that's a big thing in sports right now is the concussion protocols in all these programs – whether you're talking soccer, football, uh, anything that has to do with, with a lot of head play. Um, it's very scary when you see something like that where somebody gets up and then immediately has to sit back down. and You just hope that it's not anything too serious and um, he's able to get back out there. Yeah, I think um, 
big Archbishop Ryan there. He uh, number fifteen Crow Black. I, I I personally think he got away with the yellow uh, yellow card there because uh, that's a head to head collision, um, and you just don't want to see that happen in soccer. And um, just hoping Caden Fitch is okay, and and we'll watch to see if he um, comes back out on the field. So play resumes here at Northwestern Lehigh. The Raiders leading this one two to one with a Siddiqui Fofana goal with 22 minutes left. And there's a hard foul in the box. And what are they gonna call here? I think they're gonna call it a foul against Fofana. So Northwestern Lehigh gets a huge break there. That really could have gone either way, but lucky for them it goes in their favor and Vogwell gonna put the right foot into this one right about the goal line of the end zone on the football field, so. And a card being given here. Behind the play to number five, James McDonnell. I don't know what happened there. I I, I was watching the uh, goalie Vogwell on that one. Yeah, we were, didn't have any reason to look up field and see what was going on, but a whistle and the official at midfield Holding up a yellow card, and number five, James McDonald for Archbishop Ryan gets sent to the bench for a few minutes to cool down with a yellow card. So not quite sure what inspired that call there, but like we said, this game was going to start getting chippy to the point where we're probably going to have to start seeing cards get pulled. Yeah, exactly, and, and it's just something that um – being a person who plays soccer and watches soccer, you just want the ref to uh, take control of this game and, and kind of settle both teams down. And um, you just hope that um, – and actually, that's something to watch. If McDonald comes back in, he is sitting on a yellow card, and there is about 17 minutes left here in the second half. So something to keep our eye on. So Fofana gets it up to, I believe that is uh, Eric Lopez on the far sideline. Nope, that's that's Cliggett. Timmy Cliggett back in on the uh, on the left wing for Archbishop Ryan. That ball gets kicked out of bounds, and they're going to say it's a Northwestern Lehigh throw-in. So here's the throw-in attempt. It goes right back to Archbishop, and now Cliggett almost got it under control behind the defense, and it goes off a Northwestern player out of bounds, and our, the Raiders going to have another throw-in on the far sideline deep into the attack zone for them. So ball comes in to Cliggett. Cliggett gets it over to Lopez, who kicks it back to uh, Westervelt, who kicks it out of bounds. So Northwestern Lehigh able to get away with that one and uh, throw in in their advantage. Gets it up. It looks like that was to Matthew Johnson on the far sideline and not able to control it. Goes out of bounds, and it's going to be a Raider throw in. About the 20-yard line of the football field. So, actually, they're going to move them back to the 25. So, Yeah, it's just kind of been all physical and chippy these last few minutes. And, and the ball's right now in the Archbishop Ryan uh, offensive third of the field. And it's just been Archbishop Ryan on the attack for pretty much this whole second half here. And I think that's what's keeping Northwestern Lehigh from really being able to do anything is the physical play of Archbishop Ryan is really outdoing Northwestern Lehigh here. Archbishop Ryan does come in with a little bit more of a size advantage over Northwestern Lehigh. We don't have official uh, height and weight stats on these players, but you can definitely see a size advantage on a majority of the players in white over the players in black, so... Not saying that's not something Northwestern Lehigh can uh, can get over because they definitely have speed to counter any large size players that they may have. But um, you know, it's definitely coming into effect here as the physical play is tending to favor the team in white, the Raiders, and Northwestern Lehigh not able to really do anything about it. 
Yeah, and it looks like number 21 for Northwestern Lehigh, Brandon, senior Brandon Golas is uh, a bit shaken up on that play. He was holding his ankle. Um, he went in there on a slide tackle with one of the Archbishop Ryan players. And he keeps he keeps messing with it. I don't know if he's trying to readjust his, his shin pad or what he's trying to do there. He seems to be running around just fine, though, as he's over on the far sideline, helps up the Raider that fell in front of him. And it's going to be a throw in for Archbishop Ryan right around midfield. So the tempo definitely starting to lean in the favor of Archbishop Ryan. Here's a long ball sent into the box. And Vogwell comes out and able to easily handle that one. Puts the right foot into it and sends it up to Jason, um, excuse me, Joshua Zellner. And Zellner not able to get a foot on it, but Archbishop Ryan sends it out of bounds and Wallander to throw it in. Tries throwing it backwards, doesn't like that play and throws it forward, gets it sent back to, uh, it was number 24, Lucas Van Leerup. And the ball bouncing off a couple of players and Wallander in a foot race down the near sideline. And he wins that foot race, kicks it out of bounds so that the attack can stall and Northwestern Lehigh can bring numbers up into the box for this upcoming throw in. He was chasing, he was running down with uh, Hevner for Archbishop Ryan. And Hevner trying to cross it into the box, not able to do so and it gets cleared away momentarily by Northwestern Lehigh. Ball gets sent high up into the air, headed back towards midfield. And Jeff Garcia sends it out of bounds. So Archbishop Ryan with another throw in here at midfield. Ball gets bounced around in the air a couple of times. I'm not sure what the call was there, but it's going to go in Northwestern Lehigh's favor. We're sitting um, right now with a little under 12 minutes and 30 seconds left to go here in the second half with Archbishop Ryan leading 2-1. Um, we have goals by Fofana in the second half, and in the first half we have Timmy Kliglet with a goal, um, and then we, it's one goal scored by Colin Cofield early five minutes into this game. So, um, yeah, 12 minutes to go here, and, and it just keeps getting more physical and chippy, and, and let's see if Northwestern Lehigh has an answer. And it's like we said, when they were down one nothing, this was not over when it was one nothing early because that's exactly how Archbishop Ryan won their last game against Archbishop Wood to qualify for this tournament. They were down one nothing to Wood and ended up beating them 2-1. Two to, two to one. Does Northwestern want to see that result again? No. Does Archbishop? Yes, obviously. But, you know, it, it's just a matter of this team, even though they're down, they're not out, and now Northwestern Lehigh has to show that same attack uh, and really start putting the pressure on this Raider defense. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I think Northwestern Lehigh needs to go back to what they were doing in the first half, and, and it just seemed like they were spreading the ball, moving the ball well, and, and just switching the point of attack, which and, – and it seems like right now they're trying to force their passes, and, and if you look right now at the field, Northwestern Lehigh is a bit spread right now. They don't really have players helping each other out. So – an opportunity there for Cliggett on the far sideline. Goes by the wayside as Northwestern Lehigh tries to clear it out. But it goes out of bounds on the transitional pass. So Archbishop Ryan going to get another throw in at about midfield. And here comes the throw. It's just a light little throw up the sideline. Goes out of bounds on Northwestern Lehigh again. Right in front of the Archbishop Ryan bench. Archbishop Ryan moving left to right on your radio dial. Northwestern Lehigh right to left here in this second half as Northwestern Lehigh trying to clear it back out of their defensive zone again. But Archbishop Ryan definitely got a little bit more cleaner with their with their passing here in the second half coming out of halftime. It was a big thing in the first half. They weren't able to complete passes this half, though. Uh, definitely very positive on the passing front for the Raiders. Yeah, they, um, they're they making small, quick passes, and, it, and, and it's kind of just like a ping-pong game with their um, with Wiglet, Fofana, Westerbelt, um, Hevner, number six on the side, and another hard challenge there. Um, and that looks like Colin Cofield down. 
Yeah, it was Van Lierup who gets the foul called against him. Colin Cofield was down prior to the play, so I'm not sure if that was retaliation for something because it was the same player that Cofield was fighting with. Not fighting, but, you know, battling with. And then Van Lierup kind of taking a hard foul. Cofield's down, and we're going to step aside here. You're listening to Northwestern Lehigh Boys Soccer Action here on Penn Sports Radio. With the vast materials and professional standards, Antoine Property Services of Nutripoli is your home for commercial and industrial residential services. This includes cleaning solutions, painting, pavement solutions, snow, ice management, and landscape. Edgewood Services sophisticated management team can provide maintenance services to the commercial, industrial, educational, and HOA community sectors. Give your property the Edgewood effect. For more information, call 484-247-4240 or go to edgewoodservices.com. The Northwestern Lehigh Football Booster Club takes pride in its work with the players, parents, and staff that make up this great team. Their mission is to help promote the program through fundraisers, sponsorships, and volunteer support from people like you. From pregame meals and equipment to year-ending banquets, the Booster Club helps to provide a great atmosphere for their student-athletes. Their hard work doesn't stop after football is done. It's a year-round commitment to help keep Northwestern football strong. Hi, this is Andy Toth, president of the Booster Club. I wanted to thank all of our volunteers and ask you to help where you can support our efforts. Please go to NWL Tigers Football Booster Club on Facebook to find out how you can help. And welcome back to Northwestern Lehigh. Colin Cofield being held gingerly off the field. That's not a good sign when he's he's not walking very well right now. He's assisted by two of the trainers for the Tigers. But now we got another dangerous situation here. Fofana about 30 yards out. And he takes the free kick. It bounces off the wall. Goes right to a Raider. It was number five, I believe, James McDonald. No offsides. And Fofana to McDonald with 9.37 left in the second half, makes this a two-goal advantage for the Raiders. And you got to wonder, is that going to be the nail in the coffin for the Tigers on their season? Yeah, that was that was a great ball by Fofana, about 25 yards out. Um, he knew there was about a four-man wall in front of him, and he, he just hit low on the wall, and it deflected, and it, and it took an Archbishop Ryan bounce right to James McDonald running on, and I think McDonald feels good about that because, you know, he was sitting on that yellow card. He did get in a, a little bit of that altercation, but you know what? That's a great goal for McDonald. And I don't know now that um, Colin Cofield may be injured. I, I don't know if Northwestern Lehigh can can mount this comeback with a little, under, a little over nine minutes to go here in the second half down by two. Yeah, it's – and the way that – Archbishop Ryan is there in the attack box now. Fofana trying to cross it in, but didn't have numbers, and it bounces off a Northwestern Lehigh player. And I believe they're going to give Archbishop Ryan their fourth corner of the night. And, you know, the way this game has been going, it's not, it's not like we haven't seen crazy things happen tonight in both games. So anything's still possible. There's nine minutes left in this game. But as the corner comes in, they get a short kick it. Fofana's right there. He tries to head it in, but it gets over his head. And now Northwestern Lehigh coming up on the attack. And Ryan Baker getting away with a little bit of a push there. But like we said, the, the officials have been letting them play tonight. And Now whistle here as I believe they may be too far forward. Official on the sideline lets them know where he can throw it in at. Wallander with the throw in for Northwestern Lehigh. As now Northwestern Lehigh turns on the, th pushes the throttle down I should say. As they know they got to start making up some ground here or else this season's going to be over for them. Yeah, uh, I agree with you there, Andrew. And I just, you can kind of see the. Uh, a little bit of a spark from Northwestern Lehigh, but two goals in 
in under eight minutes, um, especially when this Archbishop Ryan team is just full attack mode right now. And that was a trip um, that's going on Fofana, but it's going for Archbishop Ryan right now. And Fofana, again, this looks like a free kick set piece and right on the 20 yard line, maybe even the 19, 18 yard line. And, and we've seen Fofana hit from there. And it looks like a card was been given to Northwestern Lehigh, number 24, uh, Van Lierup, Lucas Van Lierup. So he's going to have to take a seat now sitting on a yellow card. And the ref's kind of kind of losing control of this game a little bit. That's the second card now we've seen in the last 10 minutes. And it's it's it was just a matter of time. The way this game has been going, it's been getting more and more physical. These kids kind of knew they were able to get away with a little bit with this officiating crew. And now they're taking it just a little bit too far. And we'll, we'll see what happens here. Fofana setting up here, like she said, about the 19-yard line of the football field. So a little under 30 yards out. Fofana, not quite sure what happened there. He ran up to the ball and then stopped. I'm not sure if they put it. Oh, there was still a substitution in process. So this time he finds the wall. The wall is able to keep the ball in front of him this time. And now it's a foot race. And Matthew Johnson not able to get there before Archbishop Ryan. But now Mason Brensinger moves it up and it gets kicked out of bounds by his teammate on the far side line. It looks like that was, I'm not sure if that was Wallander on the far side there. You almost feel that Archbishop Ryan kind of had a bit of a chip of their shoulder coming on in this game after watching their girls team lose an absolute heartbreaker um, in penalty kicks 5-4. Uh, five five um, so you almost think that, you know, as their girls team sit on and watches the guys that they don't want they don't want to get swept tonight. Yeah, and it's it, that's definitely a psychological thing. Um, I, I, I believe wholeheartedly in what you're saying. I watched Southern Lehigh last season. Uh, they had girls and boys soccer action last year in districts, and uh, the girls ended up falling to Moravian Academy with a late goal, and then the boys ended up losing in similar fashion <laughs> to North to this Northwestern Lehigh team, I believe it was, and it, it was you know heartbreak city. And there's another goal. Oh my goodness. I wasn't even ready for that, and it's another goal by James McDonald. He was so far out of the box, I didn't think he was actually going to do anything with it. Moved the ball upfield, had an open shot, and Vogwell was out of position. And now, you want to talk about nails and coffins, folks. Uh, I think Northwestern Lehigh, it's miracle at, in Nutripoli time for the Tigers as... They're looking possibly at the end of their season. And Archbishop Ryan possibly looking forward to Upper Moreland on Saturday at a site to be determined. And this is going to be heartbreaking for Northwestern Lehigh. The way this game started, they had such promise. They got that early goal by Colin Cofield. And now the tides have turned in the last 60 minutes. Yeah, it just seems that it's Archbishop Ryan all the last 25 minutes, I would say. Um, Pretty and, much this whole half. Yeah, and and something to note, I, I don't think that Vagwell was, was kind of ready for that goal. It, it almost slipped right underneath him. I think um, McDonald was, was right outside of the 18-yard box, so I'd say 20 yards from goal and, and just put it on net and, and ended up putting it back on the net, and that's two for McDonald tonight. Yeah, that's uh, that's heartbreaking for Vogwell, the senior goalkeeper for Northwestern Lehigh. The first one, you know, it wasn't his fault. That that one, uh, an unfortunate own goal by Brandon Smeltz. That seems to be where the momentum really turned, though. Uh, as soon as that goal went in, Archbishop Bryan kind of put the pedal to the metal and and really put it to Northwestern Lehigh. Didn't give their offense any opportunities. And now we're getting, it looks like a, a warning in the box for Archbishop Ryan as Northwestern Lehigh sets up a corner here. Kicking from the far side, I believe this is Northwestern Lehigh's third 
corner of the night. So foot in. Good opportunity, but cleared out by Archbishop Ryan. And now numbers for Archbishop Ryan. Sends it up to Fofana. Fofana with a wide open run. Kicks it past Vogwell. And that was a beautiful play by the Raiders. Uh, unfortunate. And it just seems like it's taken all the life out of Northwestern Lehigh is now. It's a four goal lead for the Raiders with just under just above four minutes left here. And this is going to be heartbreak city for the Tigers. Definitely not a season to hang their hat on. No. The, this, with everything that happened with between COVID and everything else that was happening, it just seems that this team really overcame a lot of obstacles. They've played a very good game in the semifinals against Southern Lehigh in the Colonial League. Took care of Blue Mountain to win the Colonial League Championship. You guys are champions. So be proud of that. It didn't go your way tonight. It looked like it started to be your way. But like we said, this was going to be their toughest test. No offense to Southern Lehigh or Blue Mountain or anybody else. This was definitely, you're talking about a Philly team. Oh, really quick. Sorry not to interrupt you there, Andrew. Um, goalkeeper uh, Joseph Phillips. Uh, came out to get that ball and almost a little lackadaisical and it slipped right through him. And um, I believe that was number 28, Matt Johnson, who, who was ready to put that away. But luckily for Phillips, he jumped right back on it. Yeah, so Northwestern not giving up here, obviously. It's still a doable thing if you really want to want to call it that. Four minutes here left in the in the game. But like I was saying, this team... Your, they're Colonial League champions. They really played their hardest this season for everything going on. And now it looks like Archbishop Ryan ready to make, clear, the subs. make the subs, clear their benches, bring in their backups. They seem to have it, feel this one's uh, kind of wrapped up. But, again, no, no discredit to Northwestern Lehigh. It, they came out strong. They got that early goal, and now... It's unfortunate that the season has to end this way, but if it was going to end, at least end it in states uh, against a team that you really were competitive with for the first 40 minutes. Exactly, and and what I just noticed with Northwestern Lehigh, uh, it looks like that Coach Huntsinger, um, he put all his seniors in to ride out these last few minutes of um, – their high school career and and to point out we have 10 seniors on the northwestern lehigh team here and i believe most if not, maybe nine out of the ten if not all ten are on the field right now yeah so here come the substitutions for archbishop ryan and archbishop ryan players getting a uh well-deserved hand as most of the starters, including Siddiqui Fofana, who became the very dominant force that we thought he was going to be coming into this game, has an assist and, I believe, two goals. Is that correct? Yes. So credit to him. And there's almost another scoring opportunity for the Raiders as Vogwell had to get a hand on it or else that one was going in. It just misses the far post and goes out of bounds. Looks like they're going to give him a goal kick on this one. I'm not exactly sure how, but goal kick for Northwestern Lehigh. Vogwell sets it up, puts the boot to it, sends it all the way out to midfield. As we get down to two minutes here left in this one, and if the Tigers want any chance, they pretty much got to just – Rapid fire these shots into the net, but yeah, it it with a little I think about now two a little under two minutes to go here um, in the second half a five one uh, score right now with um, Archbishop Ryan leading. Uh, it just seems like too tall of a task, and and I think that that second go goal by McDonald really just took the wind out of uh, this northwest Northwestern Lehigh team, and I also think that. Um, seeing their leader, goal scorer, Colin Cofield go down, um, that was a bit of a gut punch right there. 
Yeah, so luckily for Colin Cofield, he's only a junior, so he'll be back next season. Um, you know, you're talking about a uh, Northwestern Lehigh team. Like we said, they have nine seniors on the roster right now. Vogwell and Goal, that's going to be a big loss for them next season. Um, you're talking about Brandon Golis, uh, uh, Aiden Winter, Aiden Bissell, all seniors this year. Jeff Garcia, the starting midfielder tonight. Um, you know, all, all of these seniors really had a great season, even though not all of them got to see all the action that they were looking for. But, um, you know, nice to see them all out there playing these last few minutes, just trying to get a few more, uh, I use the football term reps. It's not the right term in, in soccer, but just get a few more minutes out there as their high school careers are going to come to an end here. Unfortunately, in front of their home crowd, uh, Archbishop Ryan does have a pretty good traveling crowd here all the way up from the Philly, uh, the Philly area. So, you know, congratulations, Archbishop Ryan, for moving on, taking on Upper Moreland on Ten, Saturday nine, with 10 eight, seconds left here. Seven, six, this is about going to do it, folks. Four, and... Three. Heartbreak City for Northwestern Lehigh, but jubilation for Archbishop Ryan as they take 